We briefly looked at the banking imperatives under climate change and it's not like they are to, to be something to be worried about in the future. The future is already here, so the banks are already being asked to put themselves through these risk analysis in terms of physical risks that are acute or chronic and the transition risks needed to move the system, entire human system, natural system, into uh, a new phase of renewable energy and worrying about coastal sea level rise, cyclones, hurricanes, crop productions, etc. And transition risks, etc., are affecting bankings in terms of the risk they have to report for the investments they are making, the default rates they ex uh, expect, and so on. These two reports I'm combining here is uh, are brief reports from the Morgan Stanley Climate International, and they are looking in the first one. I will just show a figure at the property risk in major metros but the main tagline there is that the risks vary within a market and across markets so we're looking at average physical risk versus risk distribution across major metros and various uh, f climate factors play into it depending on which metro you're talking about as we'll see in a minute so MSCI real assets climate analysis is used to present this figure the physical risk impact of an asset is quantified by assessing the exposure of a property to a hazard and computing the costs associated with that risk using vulnerability functions specific to the real estate market in the IPCC lingo, we call risk as a multiplier of vulnerability, hazard, exposure from AR5 to AR6. Now the response also has been added as a multiplicator going into computing risk. So various factors that are used to compute vulnerability are very important to understand as well, which we will not get into. So this is looking at climate war, physical risks, individual, individual assets and metro average. So climate war is basically physical risk climate value at risk in terms of percentages okay climate value at risk um, physical risk climate value at risk climate value at risk physical risk band percentage of properties here with the color codes coming from negligible and risk reduction so greater than minus 0.5 so it's the value depreciation in that sense. Moderate risk minus 0.5 to minus 5%. Significant risk from minus 5 to minus 25%. And severe risks are less than minus 25%. So it's a negative scale. <clears throat> and average physical risk for metro are shown here in those color codes from severe risk to moderate or significant risk. So this is for Amsterdam Randstand. The color code is all blue, which comes from coastal flooding. And you have other categories of predominant hazards like other and tropical cyclone. So if you go to Shanghai, you got a little bit from tropical uh, cyclones, for example. And the risk level is severe at, you know, fairly significant percentage here, close to 50 percent so you're going from minus 100 percent to zero percent here so when you come to zero percent obviously you have negligible and risk reduction even right so miami and south florida you have risks from uh, hurricanes obviously and some from coastal sea level hong kong is mostly all coastal sea level with typhoons coming in as well houston mostly all from uh, sea level and cyclones similarly tokyo all sea levels and cyclones i won't read all of them dc metro here mostly from sea level rise and cyclones and other and let's see chicago uh, mostly from other so it's winter storms heat waves and various other factors that play into vulnerability and risk uh, for climate value at risk okay so this gives you a sense that People have to worry about these physically induced risks to property in metro areas. Of course, it works for other areas as well, but this particular report just looked at the uh, metro areas for property risks. Now, for the 
idea of looking at writing bio underwriting biodiversity so biodiversity has some value there's always been an issue about how to define the value ecosystem services and so on and of course it's very complicated because if a tree is standing there it has no real value that you can quantify other, although you can say it provides shade medicines fiber food etc but if you cut it and make furniture it's easier to put a value on it so putting value on forests biodiversity is always very complicated nonetheless we have to now start thinking about underwriting them uh, in terms of protecting them from climate change or in a warming world so few points are made by another report from MSCI few points there is a link between biodiversity loss and higher underwriting risks this relationship is especially clear for insurance covering floods crops life health and environmental liabilities so human systems are now being included crops life health and environmental liabilities some property and casualty insurers already use geospatial analysis in their pricing claims processing and risk management adding a layer of biodiversity data to this analysis may help incorporate biodiversity considerations into underwriting we found that 37% of the constituents of the MSCI ACWI work had three or more known physical assets in biodiversity sensitive areas of these 13% lacked adequate policies and programs to address impacts and related risks risks related to biodiversity loss and land use okay i have somebody knocking at the door so let me uh, stop for a second and restart okay sorry about that uh, it's always a pain when somebody interrupts uh, so where was I uh, there was a delivery I had to take so we were talking about 37 percent of the constituents of the MSCI ACWI index uh, had three or more, more known physical asset assets in biodiversity sensitive areas this is the uh, capitalization weighted index which is some index that MSCI tracks and they provide all kinds of advices based on uh, these sorts of indices they you know it includes multiple countries and so on um, so exactly speaking that's adjusted market capitalization weighted index companies that operate in biodiversity sensitive areas don't always have strong environmental management practices so we have talked about environmental societal and governance kind of reporting compliance issue now everybody has to face so we are looking at this here for example so we are looking at flagged and not flagged companies that are that operate in biodiversity sensitive areas so data is from 31 uh, as of January 31 2023 weak risk management practices are defined by risk management scores below 3 out of 10 so this is again from the MSCI uh, ESG research environmental societal social and governance issues so operations in biodiversity sensitive areas they have flagged 37 percent of the companies 63 are not uh, flagged ESG ratings are the key issues here so ESG practices performance metrics and controversies are the outcome of uh, not meeting the standards of ESG so engage with high-risk companies support regulatory and voluntary reporting underwriting and investment exclusions these are the issues they have to worry about in terms of weak risk management so 37 percent of the constituents within the MSCI ACWI index had at least three known physical assets in biodiversity sensitive areas of which we found relatively weak risk management practices in relevant key issues which included biodiversity and land use at 13 percent toxic emissions and waste at 20 percent and water stress at 39 percent one has to also worry about how these will get worse over time in with warming within the constituents assessed on biodiversity and land use 12 percent or 32 of the companies here faced severe or very severe controversies okay and the controversies include things like engaging with high-risk companies 
supporting regulatory and voluntary reporting, underwriting and investment exclusions. Examples of how biodiversity risks may impact underwriting activities, looking at biodiversity impact and potential underwriting risk again from uh, data of March 2023. Flood insurance is one. Deforestation leads to increased flooding, so that's the link why companies have to worry about it. Crop insurance, pollinator extinction is happening, water scarcity is an issue, soil erosion threaten food production together with pollinator extinction and water scarcity. Liability insurance, significant biodiversity damage due to company actions. Life and health insurance, human health is influenced by surrounding ecosystems, so there's a direct link to biodiversity uh, and air quality and water quality also depend on biodiversity so airborne waterborne diseases are also affected by those also there are zoonotic diseases if you cut down forests and you have deer coming into your backyard you could have Lyme disease for example potential underwriting risk physical damages of insured assets under flood uh, lower crop yield causes higher insurance risks under crop insurance and insurers become liable for biodiversity damage under liability insurance and higher mortality and morbidity ratios affect life and health insurance so you can see how cleanly they are mapping onto each other flood insurance so in terms of tools in 2021 floods caused an estimated us dollar 82 billion of economic losses globally with only about a quarter of these losses covered by insurance a global study found that with every 10% increase in deforestation, flood risks increase between 4% and 28%. That's quantification of biodiversity loss, deforestation to flood risks. Crop insurance, pollinator extinction, water scarcity and soil erosion threaten food production and expose insurers that underwrite the agricultural industry to higher claims due to potential crop losses. Liability insurance, insurers that underwrite environmental liability insurance may be directly liable to pay for the necessary cleanup and restoration of biodiversity. This happened in a different context with uh, BP, which had this uh, deep horizon and massive oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. They had to dish out many billion dollars to clean up the system and also allow for research to address such catastrophes and the outcomes. Mispricing of this risk could impact insurance uh, insurers' uh, profitability. Life and health insurance. Nature is a key source for developing medicines. However, with ongoing biodiversity decline, humankind may lose at least one important medicine every two years. One important medicine every two years. That's quantification. Reduced nature-based medicine sources could sus substantially increase health care costs which may in turn impact the life and health insurers. Okay, so this is a very brief introduction to nicely add to the blanking imperatives that uh, we talked about that banks will face. And we have al also talked about the scenarios, climate scenarios, transition to financial system risks, and how the central banks have to run the risk analysis uh, as well. So this is all coming together in terms of driving the financial system and remembering the network for greening the financial system and its approaches to bringing climate risks into the financial uh, system. There are other aspects under UNFCC and World Bank about uh, green funding project uh, funding green projects and so on then there is a separate issue of loss and damage which we have discussed separately as well so all these relate to climate risk and how they cascade into the financial system okay